Let's talk about BL Heli S. This is a very popular question that I get in my comments. People asking, what is BL Heli S? What, can you do an overview of BL Heli S and all that stuff? So let's talk about BL Heli S. And there's actually, in some sense, not that much to say about BL Heli S, which is why I haven't done a big overview video for BL Heli S like I did for BL Heli. Because here's the first thing I want you to know about BL Heli S. From a user's perspective, you don't have to worry much about the differences between BL Heli S and BL Heli. The differences between BL Heli S and BL Heli are largely under the hood. And I'll talk about some of them here. You can check out this RC Groups thread. And if I remember to, I'll link it in the video description. And if I forget, you'll remind me in the comments. They're largely under the hood. And so from a user's perspective, using BL Heli S is no different than using regular BL Heli. When you go to BL Heli Suite and you look at BL Heli S ESCs, you'll see that some options are missing. And the reason for that is that, like for example, if you talk about uh, damped light, which is active braking, some ESCs don't support damped light because the FETs are not able to switch fast enough. And for technical reasons, that means that they can't support braking. So with BL Heli, you have to have the option to turn damped light on or off depending on whether the ESC is able to support it or not. But with BL Heli S, all ESCs are required to be able to support damped light. And as a result, there's no longer the option to turn damped light on or off with BL Heli S. It is always on. It's assumed that if you're using BL Heli S that you want it. Another option that is missing from BL Heli S is the dither option. A lot of people don't know what dither is. A lot of people don't care what dither is. It doesn't really matter. But the point is that BL Heli S no longer needs you to have the ability to change that configuration option. It just works. And if I could sum up BL Heli S philosophically, and I don't claim to have any particular insight, but here's my perception of the way BL Heli S came to market. For a long time, KISS was like, oh, KISS is so simple and such high performance. You don't have to configure KISS. You don't have to screw around with it. You just install it and go. And BL Heli had all the knobs and dials that you could turn and tweak, but some people didn't like that. And it felt to me when BL Heli S came out, like one of the design goals was to create something that was simpler. And maybe that's what the S even stands for. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> uh, with BL Heli S, many of the options that you might have needed to configure before have been taken away from you, and you simply have the, something that performs well, period. At least that's the goal. So what is BL Heli S? BL Heli S is a new reference design, a new hardware reference design for BL Heli ESCs. And the idea is, you know, like for example, people would say, can I run BL Heli on this old Atmel ESC? And we would say, oh, that ESC does not have an external oscillator chip. You can't run BL Heli without an external oscillator chip. Not an option, it's not supported. All BL Heli ESCs, must have an external oscillator chip. So that was a hardware requirement of running BL Heli. And BL Heli S just takes those hardware requirements to the next level. So BL Heli S runs on a new microprocessor, actually two new microprocessors. They're called the Busy B1 and the Busy B2. And the difference is that the Busy B2 is a higher uh, clock frequency than the Busy B1, so it's a faster processor. And that means it, it, it can support things like higher KV motors and yada yada, but either of them are pretty good. BL Heli S uses hardware PWM. Where is that? Hardware PWM. What that means is, so uh, the motor's signal that is generated by the ESC, it's a pulse width modulated signal. And normally the way that is done is by using a general purpose IO pin on the microprocessor. And the, the microprocessor drives the pin high, and then it counts so many microseconds and it drives the pin low. And the problem with that is that if there is any uh, inconsistency in the microprocessor's loop time, then the PWM signal will have some, they call it jitter in it. It'll have some inconsistency in it. Uh, BL Heli S uses hardware PWM generation, which means that there is a dedicated circuit in the microprocessor whose only job is to generate a PWM signal. And it generates that signal with a very, very consistent uh, period or frequency is not the right word for it, but if you don't know about PWM, you might be more comfortable hearing the word frequency. It's a very, very consistent signal. 
uh, regardless of whether the microprocessor is loaded down or, or, or anything like that, the loop time of the microprocessor. And so what that means is that the motor signals that are sent from the ESC to the motor will be very, very consistent and with a very precise period. And that means the motors will be very smooth and very quiet. BL Heli S has more throttle resolution than standard BL Heli. Standard BL Heli has about 250 steps of throttle resolution. Despite the fact that you have maybe uh, 1,000 to 2,000 microseconds of throttle signal, you're not actually getting that much resolution uh, on the ESC side, both on the input side and I don't know about the output side actually, but certainly on the input side. With BL Heli S, you may have between 512 and 2048 steps. So you have more throttle resolution, you have more precise control of the throttle signal. And this is especially true if you're using multi-shot, which also is able to take advantage of that additional resolution. One shot 125 may not even be able to take advantage of that additional resolution. I'm not sure about that. Bear in mind that this does not have anything to do with your ability to have resolution on the throttle stick. If you have a ratcheting throttle stick, count the number of clicks between full, fully down and fully up. And on most transmitters, on the Tyrannus certainly, it's about 30 clicks. So if you have a ratcheting throttle on a Tyrannus, you have about 30 steps of resolution, which is really not very much. And you probably fly just fine, despite that. What we're talking about here is the resolution between the flight controller and the ESC. And the flight controller, being a computer, can take much better advantage of that high resolution than you as a human with your stupid muscles and your stupid big fat fingers can do, right? So that's where the resolution really matters between the flight controller and the ESC. BL Heli S supports high motor speeds. You can go up to very high RPMs. In theory, this could be some advantage for for smaller props and higher uh, KV motors, uh, practically speaking, we're not hitting the RPM limit on, say, 5-inch or even 4-inch props on the motors. We're running you know, up to, say, 3,000 KV. We're really not typically hitting those RPM limits anyway, so this is more of a future-proofing thing than anything practical in this day and age. Another advantage of BL Heli S is that BL Heli S supports all of the common input protocols a standard PWM, one shot 125, one shot 42, and multi shot all in one. It's auto detected just based when we plug the EPSC in. You configure the protocol in beta flight or whatever you're flying, race flight, and you go fly. Why is that not the case for standard BL Heli? The reason for that is that standard BL Heli ESCs, the microprocessor they use, doesn't have enough memory, enough program memory on board to store all of the code that is necessary for interpreting these input signals. So the standard ESCs do either PWM or one-shot. And if you want to do multi-shot, you have to download your own firmware and flash it to the ESCs. That's why it's not one, one firmware that does it all. There's just not enough memory. But the BusyB ESCs that are used by BL Heli S ESCs have enough memory to store all this code. And that is, pro for a lot of people, this is going to be one of the single most obvious advantages of BL Heli S is that you can run multi shot or one shot 42 if you so desire, and you don't have to do any fancy downloading of some weird file from a Dropbox, and then you flash it and you hope it's the right file and all that stuff. Now, another question that I get a lot, and I'm borrowing, thank you, Oscar Lang, I'm borrowing your little screenshot here. Thank you for that. <laughs> a lot, another question people ask a lot is, what is the relationship between BL Heli 16 and BL Heli S, and are they the same thing? Here's the deal. The BL Heli, the standard BL Heli firmware is numbered 14.x right now. And it will, I suppose, continue to count up. And I assume that by the time uh, we run out of 14s and maybe 15s, standard BL Heli will end up deprecated and will no longer be made. That's my guess. BL Heli S firmware starts at 16.x. So if you have firmware 16.x 
that means you're running a BL Heli ESC and vice versa. If you're running a BL Heli ESC, you can only and will only flash firmware 16.x. So yes, firmware 16.x is the same as BL Heli sort of in that BL Heli ESCs take firmware 16.x. You cannot flash firmware 16.x to a non BL Heli ESC. It does not have the right hardware to support BL Heli S and you simply BL Heli Suite will not let you do it. The other question that is worth mentioning is, is there a, you know, what's the performance gain between BL Heli S and say a really good F390 ESC, right? F390 being the top of the line for standard BL Heli and BL Heli S, of course, being BL Heli S. And I think that's a really good question. And I'm not prepared to answer that question. And the only reason I'm talking about it is to tell you that I don't think the answer is cut and dried. I think for a lot of people, who aren't tuning to the absolute limit, I think a lot of them may not notice a significant difference between BL Heli and BL Heli S. I think that people who are tuning to the absolute limit may notice some ability to get rid of really tough uh, flight handling characteristics, like the like the that last little bit of prop wash. You may find that a BL Heli S ESC gives you a little bit of ability to get rid of that, where an F390 might not. And you may find that you have a little bit wider tuning envelope on BL Heli S, where the need to get the P and the D gains exactly perfectly correct. You maybe have a little bit more leeway to get a good tune out of it. But uh, I, I heard Quad McFly talking uh, recently somewhere on the internet, and he said that in some sense his thrust stand tests are getting a little bit boring. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, of course. Pardon me if I if I misquote, but. They're getting a little boring because today's ESCs, BL Heli S, F390, they're Busy B1, Busy B2, they're all so freaking good that the days when you would see one ESC just rocketing above the others, oh, this one is so good and these ones aren't good, they're all kind of really good and some are slightly better than others, but they're all really good. And, and so I think that you shouldn't worry too much about which is better, F390 or BL Heli S. There's no question that BL Heli S is better, but to what degree that's gonna make a practical effect on your flight experience, I think is debatable. And I'm willing to be proven wrong about that. I haven't done any strict A-B testing. Take one copter, fly it with F390, take another copter, fly it with BL Heli S. I will say this though, I have some copters that are flying standard XM20 ESCs, DYS XM20, F390 chip, and I tune them and I get it to tune as good as I want it to tune. You know, as, as as good as I care to, until I'm just done working on it, and I think it flies fine. And I have another copter with BL Heli S, and I tune it, and it tunes pretty good too. So I don't feel for subjectively that there is a big difference in my tuning experience between these two. It's not like the BL Heli S ones, I go, oh my God, this is so easy, it's so much better. They're both pretty good, but I haven't done a strict AB comparison, exactly the same copter, different ESCs, to really feel that out. And I probably never will, because I'm more interested in flying than I am in doing some sort of arbitrary testing. Okay, that's it. Now you know what I think you should know about BL Heli S. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. And if you want to know more about BL Heli S, go watch my BL Heli 100% Explained video, because all the options in BL Heli S or essentially the same as in standard BL Heli, except for the ones they took away from you. Happy flying.